Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one that has been highly, highly, highly requested by all y'all. All right, we're gonna be doing some soups. Now, I'm not a big soup person. Well, that's a lot. I do like a good soup, but I absolutely 100% hate vegetable soup with the red soup, you know what I'm talking about? The tomato-based veggie soup, beef and veggie soup, I hate it. I hate it. It was my mom's favorite soup growing up, and she made it all the time. My mom was not the cook in the family. My dad was. And she cooked very few things. She didn't have an array. Food fatigue, it's real. She made so much soup. And when she would make too much, she would make a pot of soup this big. And when she made too much of it, she froze it. And then we thaw it out and ate it. I hate soup. I hate that vegetable soup. I hate it. I just don't like it. So, this is a video not showing that. <laughs> I'm going to show you some soups that I think are fantastic. These, in my opinion, are the best soups, stews, whatever you call it, the best you could ever make, okay? I'm showing you four of our favorites. We do like soup, but not tomato-based veggie soup. It's just a thing. I don't know. I don't even think Dusty likes it that much. Do you like it? What? Veggie soup? Uh, I mean, back in the day, we had it with cornbread for a year. I just hate it. I wouldn't know because I don't make it. <laughs> but, anyways, it's just, it's just a weird thing about me. But... I'm, I'm not kidding y'all. I'm not kidding you. If you want a nice bowl of soup on a cold winter's day, or just because you want soup, it don't have to be cold, one of these recipes will hit the spot because they are so delicious. Now I'm going to stop my babbling and show you the soups. Let's get it going. One of our absolute favorite soups is loaded baked potato soup with everything. So, this is an easy way for it, all right? I'm going to do some Southern Style hash browns. It's those hash browns that are just diced up that you can fry. You're going to need some heavy whipping cream, bacon bits, some seasoning blend, some shredded carrots, or big carrots if you prefer. Not all of this cheddar cheese, but some of it. This is just a big one I have. Minced garlic and a few other seasonings that I'll show you along the way. We're going to start out with four cups of water, two cups of heavy whipping cream. This is my other two cups of water. Two heaping spoons of chicken bouillon powder. I'm gonna do half of this whole bag of Southern style hash browns, which would make it 16 ounces of the potatoes. I'm gonna do like a cup of the seasoning blend. I'm just throwing that little chunk in there. And I'm gonna do a handful of shredded carrots. Big dollop, minced garlic. We're going to start slowly bringing this to a boil and I'm going to go ahead and add some paprika and salt and pepper. Black pepper. Paprika, just season to taste whatever you like. And it is potatoes, so I'm going to throw in about four pinches of salt. When this comes to a bowl, we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients. Which also, you need a half a cup of sour cream. I forgot to tell you that in the beginning. I'm sorry. But as always, the recipes and the ingredients will be listed in the description box down there. And this recipe is easily doubled. If you guys have ever had Dollywood Stampede's like mixed vegetable soup and it's creamy, this is just like it. Well... Tastes just like it. Hers is kind of thin. We're in a half a cup of sour cream. I'm going to 
let it continue boiling. Well, simmering, not really boiling. It simmered for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and add two handfuls of cheddar cheese. And a bag of real bacon pieces. Let this melt, simmer for about five minutes, and it's done. Look how good and creamy that potato soup looks. Alrighty. Beautiful, ain't it? It's gorgeous. If you have ever been to Dolly Stampede and you liked her veggie soup, this tastes like it, except it's chunky. And I'm serving it with a biscuit on the side. Okay, Bray, how is that potato soup? Mmm, that's really good. Thanks. Straight buffing. How do we feel? I feel hot. <laughs> it's tater soup, it holds heat. Good. Thanks. Mm. Oh, he fainted. It's, it's busting. <laughs> on your nose. How'd you get on your eyebrows? It's not. Ryder, how do we feel about the tater soup tonight? We feel good. It's pretty good. I'm going to make a finely diced, super fine beef stew. I found this stir fry meat on sale for $2.96. This one was three seventy three. And when I do beef stew, y'all know I rarely do leftovers because nobody likes them. I do make double beef stew because it is really good. Heat it up the next day and everybody will eat it. So I have some of this and I'm going to, this is already kind of chopped up pretty fine, but I'm going to dice it up finer. I'm going to use the rest of those shredded carrots that I have. White pearl onions. If you guys have never had these, these are so awesome. And I got some really tiny bread potatoes. And I'm going to make my own beef stew seasoning out of things that I already have. So let's get this going. Okay, I think that's pretty fine. While this is sitting on the cutting board, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some all purpose flour on it. with some salt, a little bit of black pepper, paprika, the favorite onion butter, just going to toss the coat. I'm doing this in my instant pot, but you can do it on your stove top or in your slow cooker. Um, I am using my slow cooker setting in my instant pot, but I'm going to saute this meat first and get a good little crust on it on the saute mode. My other instant pot, her name is Marjorie. What should this one be? I was thinking Sasha. All right, got that saute mode on. When it gets hot, I'm gonna to toss in that meat that we just cooked. I'm gonna add six cups of water. And there's six. Garlic. I know. Remember, I'm doubling this. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. 
and toss in my shredded carrot. The white onion pole. I would say this is probably six cups of mini red potatoes. Garlic powder. A little shake of paprika. Black pepper. A teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Use the rest of that bottle. I'm gonna do two bay leaves. Of course, some of my favorite onion butter. This part's optional. But a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. I wanna slow cook this slowly for eight hours on low. Slow cook it slowly. Oh my goodness. I want to slow cook this on eight hours on low. Salt to taste, by the way. Before I forget, whew, that was close. One packet of BB onion Lipton, Lipton soup mix. Woo. The beef stew is finished. This is the consistency that we like our beef stew, but if you want your beef stew thicker, you can thicken it up with about a tablespoon of flour, like take out some of this liquid in a bowl, mix it with a tablespoon of flour, then pour it in, or you could do cornstarch. You could even do instant potatoes. This is the consistency that we like though. Who says you have to have tomato paste? And who says you have to have the big, chunky, expensive beef stew? Okay, boys, how do we feel about beef stew? Mmm. It's really good. Mmm. It's really good. good. Was it good, Colin? <laughs> I'm serving it with homemade sourdough English muffins. I made a short a couple of days ago where I made these. So that's what we're having with them. We're gonna make taco soup tonight, y'all. This is one of my favorite recipes for taco soup. What you're gonna need is hamburger meat, a pack of taco seasoning mix, green chilies, a can of Rotel, my case generic, corn, black beans, two cans, and two cans of light red kidney beans. You're also gonna need half a can of tomato sauce. This is going to be busting, as Brayden says. Here's a little trick, y'all, if you didn't know this. If you have hamburger meat that is taking too long to thaw out, it's okay. Throw it in your pot with like a fourth a cup of water, let's say. Turn the heat to medium low and put a lid on it. And it'll thaw it out in about five minutes. Okay, now we're going to start cooking it up because it's pretty much thawed out now in the middle. The water will cook out. A little bit of it's still frozen, but not too bad. Okay, oh, I'm going to put some easy onion in that to give it a little bit of flavor. And a little whoop of minced garlic. The hamburger meat is cooked. All that water didn't cook out, but I'm just going to drain it out when I drain the hamburger meat. So, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Now, we have some drained hamburger meat here. I'm going to add that taco seasoning. Green chili. And the generic rose hell. Let this cook for just a minute. Let those flavors mingle with the hamburger meat. After these have mingled for a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add everything else. Add your drained. 
had your dream corn, as you can see. I threw mine by accident. Okay. So in that drained corn. Now, do not drain your beans because that is the liquid we're going to be using. That liquid in there is full of nutrients from the beans. I don't get why people say they want you to drain your beans and just add water. Like, why would you do that? That is nutritious bean juice, which sounds really weird when you say it like that. But it is. So pretty much eight ounces of tomato sauce. Now we're just gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes and then it'll be ready to eat. The taco soup simmered for about 20 minutes and it smells really, really great. And I just wish you could smell it. I'm serving it with some cheese sour cream and some of those clearanced out tortilla chips. See, look how pretty she is. Ain't she just so pretty? We're using those holiday chips. <laughs> it's so good. Taco soup good? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to have a chicken and rice soup, pretty much chicken and rice soup. You can just throw in whatever you have and it'll be good. As long as you use some chicken broth and some veg. I got four, I think it's like a half of a chicken breast, four of them. I can't count. One, two, three. I got three of these little packages of chicken breast, which is like one and a half chicken breast in total. Some vegetable stew mix. It has celery, carrots, and onions. Some wild rice. Well, it's a royal blend, but it has a wild rice in it. Some of my home canned chicken broth. And we're going to be using some seasonings straight from the pantry. For this, I am using my Instant Pot because I love it. To the Instant Pots, I will be adding the entire bag. Whoa! Is that a tater? Yo, I didn't know that had taters in it. Four taters. Wow. But why does that have taters? It's just vegetable. I didn't know. Okay. So I'm taking those four taters out because I don't want taters in this. That's random. Just four little taters. I didn't know I had taters in it. Okay, I'm just going to put these in the freezer for something else. I'm going to toss in each piece of that chicken. And it can be frozen because I'm using this in my Instant Pot. If you don't have an Instant Pot, don't worry. You can do this on the stove top too. You just got to cook it a little bit longer. You can even pre-cook your chicken. I forgot to show it, add in the chicken broth, and I'm gonna add in two cups of water. Some garlic powder, just eyeball it. Some thyme. Y'all have had this same thyme for years. Thyme lasts forever. A little bit of black pepper. A little whoop of Italian seasoning. A bay leaf. Look at that bay leaf. Look at that bay leaf. Do you see the bay leaf? It's shaped like a heart. I'm putting on that instant pot lid. And I'm going to pressure cooker. For 25 minutes. Yep. This is what she looks like. <laughs> I made myself 
myself laugh. Oh, I make myself laugh. I'm sorry. Um, the reason I instant potted this, pressure cooked it, is because it makes the chicken do this. Fall into shreds. So, if you don't have frozen chicken like I did, um, you don't have to do this part. You can just put it on saute or just cook it on your stove top. I'm going to show this chicken and be right back. Alrighty, now the next step. Super easy. Let's do it. Turned it to saute and I'm going to pour like a cup of this rice blend. I'm just going to cook it until this rice is done. And that's all we got to do for the soup. <laughs> that is it. Actually, I might put a little bit more rice. There we go. So I'm just going to start cooking this up until that rice is done. And then we have chicken and rice soup. It's getting a little thick, thicker than I like, so I'm adding two cups of hot water to this to help thin it out. I'm gonna bring it back up to a simmer, let it simmer for five minutes, and then it should be done. And it's done. Here we have some chicken rice soup. I'm gonna serve this with some crackers. Easy peasy. How do we feel about dinner tonight, y'all? Wow. It's quite good. Mmm. It's delicious. It actually. Dang that. I Just told one. you they look good and they taste delicious too. And I swear to my goodness, with all this technology we have in this world right now, we can't have smell of vision Come on, YouTube, Google, whoever, Samsung, I don't know. Invent the smell of vision If you try any of these soup recipes, I hope you love them. But remember, make it your own. If there's something you don't like, omit it. Do something else. Make it your own. It's all customizable. And every single one of these soup recipes fed us lunch the next day because there was leftovers. It's true. We're not really leftover-y type people. The kids, Dusty, don't like it too much. So I try to cook just the exact amount so I don't have leftovers because I really hate food waste. But, soups and stews, things like that, they're really good the next day. So, we can actually handle that. So, if you try these recipes, I hope you love them. Give me a big thumbs up if you liked the soup video. And, I'll see you guys next video. And, it's going to be... Normally, I don't tell you what my next video is going to be because I'm just so random in my head. But, this one was highly requested too. So, I'll be on the lookout for some homemade mozzarella cheese, y'all. She's coming Friday. All right, anyways, I love you. Remember, as always, be positive and kind and happy and let others be happy. Don't rain on nobody's parade. I love you. I'll see you later. Bye.